Silence. Everything was silent. Only the swirling sounds of the nearby river and the hoot of an owl from close by could be heard. The mist that strode around them sat still and quiet. Alistair sat quietly at Colin Coke, waiting for the all clear signal. It gave a great sigh. Gradually, a silent shuffling could be heard from around them. A rattling and a banging soon followed. Alistair was surprised. An engine? Here? This late at night? Well, it's supposed to have to be halted for something. A connection, maybe? It sped their eye around, looking up and down the line, then into where its smoke box would be, only to see directly through onto the other side of them. Nothing. Not on the main line, or the branch line. Of course, the mist didn't help any more than it did to see quite clearly. However, the chuffing was still present. Till it stopped. Immediately, almost like it had fallen it into another layer of mist that was separated from where they were. What was that? They asked themselves. Just me, came a sudden voice. Alistair jumped. There, at the other platform, through the mist, was the little, boxy engine. It was painted in dark green, with bold letters reading SNM on his side, with the number 3 under them. He had brought nothing with him, just himself. Alistair stared for some time, not knowing what to say. The engine knew all too well what it was thinking, though. I'm not a normal sight for you, am I? S sorry stuttered Alistair. No worries. The engine stared back for a short amount of time. I must say, where is your face? Alistair remembered that engines weren't accustomed to seeing what seemed to be a den engine rolling around. Oh, um, I'm in my cab. But my eyes are on my lamps. In your cab? Lamps, repeated the engine. What kind of sick person would do that to an engine? My owner, I suppose. So Topham Hutt? No, Peter Boomer. Oh, Mr. Boomer. I know him, said the engine. You do? Oh, yes. He helped build my railway. Lovely man from what I remember. Or he was. Hmm? Asked Alistair. Well, like you, I see. He did some interesting things to engines. Oh, yeah, responded Alistair. The two fell silent. What's your name, sorry? Asked Alistair, but the question fell on silent ground. Have you ever been on this railway? Asked the box cab. I've been on it, replied Alistair. Not the big railway. My railway. E e e your railway? replied Alistair. Lovely little line it is. Me, my brother, and sister work it. Well, there's a rude single axle, but we don't talk about her. Oh, responded Alistair. Yes, lovely little line to the wharf. It's always a pleasure, though, going to the station at the end of the line. I'm on my way there, in fact. You are? asked Alistair. Yes, indeed. I'm to get mended. My parts were worn out, you see. And Alistair could see. The engine had clearly seen better days. He was covered in soot and dust. He seemed to have been hodgepodge together. Well, I must get going. Goodbye. And with that, the engine set off, vanishing into the mist. Good night. That was... interesting. Suddenly, another sound of chuffing could be heard. A prominent one this time. Through the mist, practically on time, came a smart-looking blue tender engine. Hello, Edward, said Alistair as he came into the station of a late-night passenger train. Hello, Alistair, replied Edward. I would have thought you'd been on the mainland by now. Was meant to, but I had to wait for the connection. Connection? What connection? quoth Edward. From the er, railway over there? They gestured to the set of points leading elsewhere. You mean the Norandine branch line? You know that hasn't been used in ages. I thought it was a railway, inquired Alistair. Well, it was the Soda and Mainland Railway. It was originally its own line, connected by a mining railway to the north of here, and to Vickerstown. 
But it was closed in 1915. Alistair fell silent. Edward could feel how tense they had become. Are you alright? Alistair stuttered. What? What happened to its engines? Edward sighed. One of them was scrapped, another of them was lost to time, and the third, well, he was meant to go to Vickerstown to be mended, but never made it. Alistair gulped. What happened to him? Well, no one truly knows. No one ever found his remains if something truly did happen to them. Some say he simply got lost in the mist. Others say he fell off the viaduct. Edward stopped. Although he couldn't see their face, he knew he had clearly struck a nerve. I'm sorry. Suddenly, and almost on time again, with the hoot of the owl, Alistair's signal went up. They left without another word. Edward sighed as the owl flew from the trees, darting around the station until landing on Edward's footplate. You just can't give up, can you? Edward asked the owl. The owl stirred back from its massive yellow eyes. They swirled around its face, almost like a galaxy. It is what I must do, responded the owl. Edward sighed a mournful sigh. Promise it'll be all right, he asked. Yes, if he were to return to that man, horrible things would happen to him. Edward only groaned. They, Proteus, they... R right, s sorry, responded the owl. You know, for an all-seeing entity... I would really think that you'd be better at something like pronouns.